Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, I'm going to do an unboxing and give my first impressions on the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. Let's get started. So this Raspberry Pi was released this week. Uh, this is the box that it was shipped in from buyapi.ca. So it's a big box for a very little Raspberry Pi. You can see here that it is mostly just packaging. Inside is a very, very tiny Raspberry Pi 3 box. Taking a closer look at the box here, uh, you can see it is the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus. The box is pretty simple and straightforward, and I actually kind of like that. Uh, on the back, there is some information regarding getting started and a website that it points to. There's also information here about where it's made, made in the United Kingdom. Opening the box uh, is kind of interesting because the Raspberry Pi 3 is just sitting in here. There's no static shield bag. There's pretty much nothing. It's just the Pi sitting in a simple box. So pulling the Pi out here, there is some information underneath the Pi. So we'll set that down on the paper there and open up this little manual. So it's just regulatory compliance and safety information. So it's pretty economical packaging for a pretty economical little computer. Examining the board here, I can see the big changes right off the bat are the addition of the Wi-Fi chip here, as well as the heat shield here on the CPU chip. There are also pins here for power over ethernet. So this is where that little Pi hat comes into place. It is another computer board that plugs into this and sits on top of the Raspberry Pi. And this is what the PoE hat looks like. And this little computer board here allows the Raspberry Pi to be powered over ethernet. Here's a view of the underside of the board, which looks largely the same as the regular Model 3B. So there are some things to consider here. Uh, I did take a look at this. It won't really fit in a lot of Raspberry Pi cases out there that have heat sinks that cover multiple chips because the chip itself is slightly raised due to the heat shield on it. There might also be issues with cases such as this one here, the Super Kintaro, that has a heat sink that goes over the entire board. Uh, this may not fit properly due to the raised chips. For example, the Flerk case, which is one of my favorite cases, has a metal post that comes in direct contact with the CPU chip. The CPU chip is raised slightly, so the Flerk case itself may not assemble properly. Now, there are two ways to fix it. It's either to sand down the metal post just a little bit or to get a thinner conductive pad. So here's a slightly different angle to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. You can see the raised CPU chip here, and here's another angle to show you the raised chips. And you can also see that the Wi-Fi chip might also get in the way of certain heat sinks. Something to note as well is that the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus consumes a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi 3. And that is because of this wireless chip. In regards to whether or not you should upgrade to this for RetroPi, I would say if you're looking for N64 performance specifically, you may get a few more FPS in N64 games, but you're not probably gonna get the performance you're really looking for. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you everyone. Take care.